Hey guys, I'm Sun. I'm a privacy and security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. In today's episode, I want to share why I use Tails OS and how to install it on a USB flash drive. Tails OS is a Debian derived operating system that has a whole bunch of really interesting properties in the context of privacy conscious use cases. Number one, uh, it's what we call a live operating system. What that means is you don't need to install it on the internal hard drive of your computer. It's something that you can flash on a USB flash drive and then use kind of out of the box. Uh, the other really interesting property of Tails is it is amnesic. What I mean here is whatever you do on Tails with the default uh, configuration will vanish as soon as you shut down the computer. And why so? Because everything you write is not written to the actual flash drive, it is written to the memory on your computer. And memory is volatile, meaning when you power it off, it loses its memory. Um, and then Tails by default will also route everything through Tor, so it will use Onion Routing to help you guys be anonymous. And that is why whistleblowers, uh, journalists, uh, hacktivists, and all kinds of people use Tails uh, as part of their arsenal. Now, there's one reason why I absolutely love Tails, uh, and it's not related to me being a whistleblower or a hacktivist or anything. I like Tails because I like to compartmentalize specific sensitive use cases away from my Mac. I love Mac OS, by the way, I haven't upgraded to Big Sur. I'm not sure that I like Big Sur from a privacy perspective, but Catalina is actually pretty good. I find it's the most usable or user-friendly version of kind of like a, a Unix slash Linux flavored operating system that actually will run Adobe products and stuff like this. But do I blindfully, blindfully, is that a word? Do I trust Mac OS and Apple uh, for everything I do on a computer? No. I absolutely don't trust Apple uh, for everything I do on a computer. That is why I use compartmentalization. Now, I really honestly believe that having one computer for everything one does is not the right approach to privacy and security. In my opinion, the right approach is compartmentalization. So to that extent, for instance, I use a Raspberry Pi that I've configured as read-only and offline, which we kind of call a cold computer. Uh, I use that to generate paper backups that are encrypted. For instance, this one here is a mnemonic for Bitcoin testnet, encrypted into a QR code, printed on paper that is waterproof and that will likely last 100 years. More on this in a future episode. I also use Tails to manage my PGP master keys, which I then burn onto a little YubiKey. Not sure if this will focus here. So I transfer them to a YubiKey so that then when I'm on my Mac, I can sign or authenticate or things like this using PGP without my computer having access to the master keys. And that's something that I really like. And by the way, all of this signing stuff is done on the device itself. So again, I'm using compartmentalization. I'm not doing the cryptographic work on the computer. I am doing it on this little hardware device. But in order to manage uh, those PGP keys, I need to create them using uh, GNU PG, for instance. And that is something that ships on Tails. And I can then use Tails to create those keys or extend them. And that's super cool. Another reason why I use Tails is I don't like the idea, uh, as you know by now, by the way, I, I'm started, uh, whew, I've started accepting Bitcoin donations and Monero. I'll take a moment here to thank everyone who has donated this work is something that I really do uh, for the love of it. That being said, I'm trying to do more of this and in order to do more of this, it's clearly not the 200 bucks a month that YouTube is paying me that w that allows me to do this. It's it's your contribution. So thanks so much to everyone who has donated. So, uh, woo, sorry for this little advertisement here. Um, so I started accepting Bitcoin and it's, since I'm a security researcher, I've you know went batshit crazy on the setup and I don't like the idea of having, for instance, Electrum running on my Mac because that version of Electrum, the file that it generates, that's something that can be exfiltrated if my computer is compromised. And since I would be typing the password to unlock that file, well, someone with a keylogger could also steal that. And if they have both, they can re remove the funds. Now I'm using something called multi-signature and I'll talk about this in the Bitcoin mini series, but essentially in order to sign a transaction, I can sign it on the computer, but I also need a hardware wallet that will co-sign transactions. That being said, not always, not everyone wants to go to that extent. 
And even at that extent, I prefer running Electrum on Tails, and Electrum ships by default on Tails. Uh, now, you may ask, son, if Tails is amnesic, won't it just forget you know, what your keys are or what the, the Electrum setup is? Well, that's a great question. Uh, it will, but uh, you can enable something called persistence on Tails, and when you enable persistence, uh, certain apps will uh, keep on functioning you know, every time you use Tails. And, and that's done by creating an encrypted partition using Lux uh, that will be mounted when you log in to Tails. I'll show you guys how this works in a moment. Uh, there's also a more uh, sophisticated way of doing this using Veracrypt, and that will be the subject of a future episode. So I love Tails. So how do we get started with Tells? Well, that's pretty simple. I put together a guide. Uh, it's published on my website. I'll link to it in the description. Uh, so <clears throat> essentially, you have to download an image <clears throat> and then you wanna write that image or copy the image to the flash drive. And in order to do this, I always use DD to do it at a really raw level, but some of you may prefer doing it using Etcher. That's actually the default way on the Tails website. But today, we're going to do it using command line because you know what? We can, and that's how we learn. So uh, first things first, you want to make sure that you have Homebrew installed on your Mac. You may have it installed, <clears throat> sorry about this, you may have it installed from a previous guide. Uh, in order to know if you have it installed, just type brew dash dash version. And as you can see, I have it here. The next thing we, we want to do, and if you didn't have it there, by the way, you would essentially take this command, paste it here, and run it. And it takes a little while, it's gonna install uh, Homebrew on your Mac. Then uh, we wanna go about disabling Brew Analytics to make sure that we're doing things more privately. And last but not least, we wanna install Brew install, uh, well, we wanna install GNUPG. Uh, you may already have that installed because of a previous episode. In order to know if you have, you just type uh, gpg dash dash version, and boom, uh, GPG is installed. By the way, quick disclaimer, uh, when you install stuff using Brew, you have to make sure that you keep it up to date. Uh, there's been a recent vulnerability found in GNUPG, so if you follow the guide previously, you could wanna run Brew upgrade, enter. That's gonna make sure that all of the uh, formulas, I believe, uh, that you have on your computer will be updated to latest. Once this is done, uh, we want to go about downloading the latest release of Tails. So I put a link here. If you go on the website, it's tails.boom.org. Uh, you want to download this here by clicking on it. I've done that already, uh, and I've saved it to my downloads folder. So I have the image, and I have the image signature. Uh, in order to download the image signature, uh, it's a little tricky on the website, so I created a little command line thing for you guys here. Uh, you want to start by creating a variable called tells release semver. So the semver is the version number. So if you go on the website here, it's 4.18 at the time I'm recording this. So uh, you wanna make sure that this here is 4.18, you then press enter. And then you just wanna run this curl command and that is downloading the appropriate signature. So I have little snitch, I'll allow it. I can see that it's tells.boom.org. Uh, this is the actual domain of tells. Uh, and last but not least, uh, you want to make sure that you import the Tails signing key. So that's Tails public key. If you want to learn more about all of this signing stuff, uh, there's an episode for it, and I'll link it in the description. Uh, so this I've done already. Uh, and once this is done, uh, we can actually go about verifying the Tails release using GNUPG. So to be clear, you guys would want to run this if you haven't run it before. And then you want to run this command here and that will verify the integrity of this image we downloaded. So if, for instance, someone is attempting a man-in-the-middle attack against us, uh, the signatures wouldn't match the file, and we would be alerted of this. So in this case, we can see good signature. We can also see the uh, fingerprint here, and that fingerprint matches the one that's published on my website. And by the way, if you wanna learn more about how to verify if the public key is actually uh, you know, the right one. Uh, there's a, a guide for this as well, and you can just click on the here button there. Okay, so time to uh, copy Tails over to the USB flash drive. So you can install Tails on pretty much any flash uh, drive or, uh, boy, what am I saying here? Damn it, son. USB flash drive or SD card. Um, faster is better. 
especially uh, for read. So when you're gonna be booting tails, uh, that's the read speed. So this little USB flash drive from Samsung is called the Samsung Bar. Let me try to make this focus here for you. So the Samsung Bar is not so great when it comes to write performance, but read performance is actually good. I think it's like 150 megabyte, megabits. Damn it, I always miss. Anyways, you get my point, it's fast. Uh, so you wanna take it and you wanna plug it into your computer. And once it's in the computer, uh, quick disclaimer, warning, do not run the following command as is. You really have to follow those instructions carefully because you could override the wrong destination. Uh, so when you run this util list, uh, it will list all of the disks connected to your computer. And this is a 32 gigabyte uh, flash drive. So clearly this is it here, it's disk number four. Uh, so when we go down here, first command here, uh, you wanna replace N by four, enter, demo computer, shitty password, yours should be much more elaborate. Uh, if this command here fails, you wanna run the second here, disk four, enter, and then this command here, and that's the one that's really dangerous. So you wanna make sure that you really double check, you know, disk four, disk four before pressing enter, and then enter. What's happening now is DD is copying the image to the USB flash drive, and that's pretty much it. All right, so uh, the data has been transferred to the USB flash drive. Uh, now we wanna make sure that we unmount uh, the disk. So again, disk four, enter and we're good. So now we have this little flash drive. Uh, as I mentioned in last episode, not sure if you've seen it, but all Macs pretty much uh, up to mid 2015 work amazing on Tails. Uh, more recent Macs tend to be shitty uh, in, in Linux compatibility. That's kind of why I absolutely love Macs from uh, 2015. So this here is a 13 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, mid 2015. So you just want to take your stick, you plug in the USB port, and then you press power, quickly press out. That will allow you to boot into an alternate uh, disk. Uh, so I am going to choose EFI boot, enter. Now I'm not sure if you're going to see this here uh, on the overhead cam, but essentially this is allowing me to boot into Tails. There are a few things uh, that we need to configure uh, before being inside of the operating system and that has to do with a whole bunch of different privileges. By default, it's really restrictive and it won't let you do much. It won't even allow you to have admin privileges and that is, it, it's done like this for a reason. I mean, it, without admin privileges, there's no way that you can alter the Tails operating system making it even more safe. All right, so once Tails has booted, uh, you're brought to this interface here. So I'm not sure if you'll see this in the overhead camera. Hopefully you will. Um, essentially it asks you to choose a language and a keyboard layout. This is a French Canadian keyboard. So you wanna go here and type Canadian, whoa, C-A-N, Canadian multilingual, and that's good. And then format is great. If you wanted to set an administrative password, you can do so here and choose an admin password. By the way, uh, it will spoof your Mac address by default, which is amazing. So again, it's a really privacy conscious operating system. Uh, and then you would wanna click Start Tails. Uh, now, there's a whole bunch of things that you can do inside of Tails. I'll keep that for future episodes. Uh, but the number one thing that people tend to do is use Tor, but you can also use Tails uh, for a whole bunch of different use cases that I mentioned earlier. So I'm really looking forward to uh, showing you guys more of those in, in future episodes. But yeah, this is a foundational episode on which future episodes will be based. So. That's all I have for you today. Um, yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye.